and also I'm looking forward to the final of the 100 breast for women. Once again, Yulia Yafimova and Rita. Oh, it's as noisy as it has been over the first three nights. We had loads of people in front of BT, but I'm looking, it's only really the corner seats that are not occupied. Pretty much all the others are the far end. But for James Guy's withdrawal from the 200 flies, he's given a chance for an Italian to come into it, who's actually based in this country. He's based down at Kelly College down in Devon. So uh, that's worked out nicely for those down at Kelly College, <laughs> down in uh, Tonneton. Anyway, on to the longest race for the men in the 1500 freestyle. And there is an outright favorite in this. Uh, we will see him very shortly, but uh, let's go through them. Yamika will be in lane seven for the Czech Republic. He was a finalist at the World Championships last year, also the Europeans two years ago. Henry Christiansen for Norway was in the final two years ago. Well, no, he was not in the final, but he was second in the 400 meters here in Glasgow. Here's for a well Brock as one of the faster times in Europe this year in the 1500 meters freestyle going in lane three. Now, this man's already won the 400. Can he make it a 400 and 1500 double? And do you have the 800 later in the week as well? Well, he's one of the favorites. Uh, I think everyone would love to see him facing off Olympic and world champion Gregorio Patrinieri. However, it was Damien Jolie from France who surprisingly had the best time in the heat. So he qualified first into lane four. Well, he had a very good swim in Rio a couple of years ago, which uh, put him on the scene and uh, set the French record in Rio. Uh, the Olympic Games, but uh, there's the world record, 14.31. Don't see Sun Yang's 2012 marker from London going. And maybe the European could be challenged. Anyway, it's going to be another great duel between Romanchuk and Patrinieri. The World Championships last year, it was Patrinieri who touched first. However, at the last year's short course Europeans, Romanchuk managed to beat the Italian Greg, as we can read it on his cap. Romanchuk was third in London two years ago in this competition. Mention the area, as we know, just having heard his media conference on the day before this competition started, he is oh so up for this. He really is. He wants to go and set a marker. Of course, he's talking and flirting a little bit with open water right now, talking about that's what I want to go into eventually. But right now, it's pool swimming for me, and I'll let that happen another day. So, I think we should focus on Romanchuk and Patrinieri. Patrinieri is the European record holder, but Romanchuk was amazingly fast in the 400 meters. So, it should be between those two. And let's not rule out Florian Belbrook from Germany. As you mentioned, he had a very good time, a solid 14.40 this year. He was also uh, swimming a couple of uh, open water races, actually winning one World Cup uh, in Hungary, Balaton Fred, the venue of last year's World Championships. So already an established open water swimmer as well, Florian Welbrook. Well, it's early stages, so we won't get too excited, but they're right on European record pace. Paltrinieri setting the early pace with Elbrook in second place. Now, Paltrinieri right in the middle of that European record, just started to accelerate, started coming down to a 57 high, just injecting that bit of pace. We won't be seeing 57 highs at this stage. Uh, as long as he's repping about 58.5, that's about where he needs to be. Yeah, now settling into the right pace, I, I think Gregorio Patrinieri. Completely different styles if you compare Patrinieri down in lane six and Mikhailo Romanchuk in the black cap swimming right above him. Completely different style, completely different technique, but pretty much the same speed. It's interesting to discuss that because 
basically Romanchuk is a, is a 400 up boy isn't he and you kind of think of Baltrinieri he really is 8 and 50 you don't think of him in fours you think of him at the longer distance he's talking about open water where the adaptability of the Romanian to, to just go to the Ukrainians just go and go bit of 4 bit of 8 bit of 15 and feel equally comfortable at doing those three different events but look at look at his style I mean Romanchuk very relaxed long strokes way less stroke uh, in each lap than Paltrinieri so that is very relaxing style and uh, saving some energy for the final uh, 500 meters or so it is Paltrinieri who sets the pace but Romantic really knows that he has to be somewhere around Paltrinieri's waist well they're separated out by three different lanes and uh, but they'll be keeping a watchful eye on each other they don't want anybody in between just to block that view that view is being partially blocked by Romanchuk and of course the uh, now really into his stroke for a Wellbrock in lane number three so uh, the German coming through German really has accelerated over that hundred yes but it's still Patrinieri swimming under 30 seconds in each uh, lap this was another 29.7 by him 29.6 by Romanchuk and 29.5 by Welbra so three in the mix at the moment still early days where you can see five from our overhead shot are all in uh, pretty close contention and uh, we'll look across the pool and we'll see at the moment Paltrinieri has probably about oh, half a body length advantage, certainly no more than that, over Melbrock. Third place is Roman Chuk. Damien Jolly in fourth. And also, um, just keep an eye on the turns of Roman Chuk. I already mentioned that he has long strokes, way less uh, strokes uh, each lap than Patronieri, but when they go to the turns, Patronieri turns, kicks one or maybe two underwater and that's it take a look at Romanchuk now you cannot see from this angle but he has way better turns so as of now I would put my money on Romanchuk very little long, between long way to go yeah point one two, but we're not even reached third of the race we will do when they turn this time this will be the 500 meter turn for the Italian and Romanchuk might just get ahead of him here they're going to go into the wall pretty much together oh it's very very tight Wellbrock in second place third place is Romanchuk for Damien Jolly 453-14 so slipping a bit outside European record pace just over two and a half seconds now yeah we're not expecting a European record this time but we are expecting some great duo or we might even say that uh, Florian Valbrook might be in the mix as well in the final 200 meters or so. Top let's not rule out Damien Jolie. Yeah, top four separated by, well, that's two seconds at this stage. Top three separated by a third of a second. That's how tight this is. And uh, again, the lead might change quite a few times. There's four of them pretty much in the line as they come down below our commentary position which is at about uh, six metres, and it's going to be Altranieri getting there just ahead of Romanchuk and Wellbrock. Very tight between the two of them. Fourth is Damien Jolly. And, yeah, Mika, we haven't really mentioned him in the race because he's not really in contention at this stage. Just a little bit dropped off the leading four, but one, two, and three, you could pretty much stick a washing line across them. Yes, and... And this lap, Romanchuk was five hundredths of a second quicker than Patrinieri, so that is pretty much nothing. They are swimming in the very same pace, and Velbrook now taking over by 0 0.02. Yeah, two one hundredths, that's all there is between Velbrook and Patrinieri. And uh, Romanchuk just maybe biding his time just a little bit. What's happening with Jolly in lane number four? Is he going to come to the party? Well, he's only <laughs> one body length behind so he's not too far adrift Yamika still holding on to fifth this may change again in terms of lead 
Alcinieri back in the lead now. Velbrock in second place, and then Romanchuk in third, Jolie in four, but top three again right across the pool. Looks like there's no gap between them at all. We have just witnessed the first change of pace by Paltrinieri after swimming several 29.567. Now he's down to 20, uh, 20 9.2 and yep. he is keeping that pace let's see if Vabrook and Romanchuk can hold the same pace well Melbrook was at 29.19 there compared to Maldronier is 29.54 Romanchuk 29.66 so it's going to be those little margins that change things around as the balance and counterbalance of this 1500 meters freestyle changes and again we might have another new leader this time round who knows very very tight between Melbrock in three and Paltronieri. They're going to go to the wall pretty much together. And just the Italian from the German with the man from Ukraine in third place and Damien Jolie in fourth. Doesn't look to me like he's going to really make a fist of this. No, no, no. Not at all. It is going to be Valbrook, Romanchuk and Paltronieri fighting it off until the very end. Look at Valbrook's move once again up in lane three. This is going to be a much stronger 50-meter lap than the previous one. Paltronieri behind. Belbrock now with Romanchuk in third place. Damien Jolie in fourth. He might well be swimming his own race here. It's uh, far enough ahead of Yamik. He doesn't have to worry. But in terms of the top three, I'm afraid it looks like they've gone and uh, they're disappearing out of his view. Right now, Romanchuk really needs to focus on Belbrock because he has made his move. So Romanchuk keeping up with Paltrinieri all the time and he has to look to the other side right now. Because Vabrook is more than half a second away from Paltrinieri. 848-68 plays 849-20 in terms of one and two. Managed uh, to clear well over halfway. Next time they come back this end it will be 1,000 meters. So we'll have 500 and two thirds of the race will have gone. German on his own. And then we've got Romanchuk and Paltrinieri changing places again. And extending the lead, Valbrook. Now 29.0 is split time compared to 29.5 by Romanchuk, 29.7 by Paltrinieri. So Paltrinieri is dropping behind. Only in third position right now. And Romanchuk has to catch Florian Valbrook. 500 meters to go when they turn at this time. Let's see what the gap is between one and two. Well, there's on your screen 1.22 between Belbrock and Romanchuk, but then only two tenths between the Ukraine swimmer and the man from Italy. I mentioned that Florian Belbrock won that open water race uh, in Lake Balaton this June. That was his very first victory in the World Cup, and he had. Uh, a similar swim to this so he went with the pack in the first half and then broke away he swam his own pace and no one could catch up with him anymore so making a 1.40 between one and two at the moment and uh, well hardly anything between two and three and uh, see the gap is increasing between Valbrook and Romanchuk so the Ukrainian now has to go after Valbrook Valbrook doesn't back. look good does he nope. doesn't look good at all at this stage Maybe this is going to be the pattern of the rest of the race. 1.4 it was at the last split, down to 1.07 now. So he took four tenths very nearly out of the lead of Romanchuk. Romanchuk 29.0, another great split by the Ukrainian. Look at the legs crawling. Uh, Valbrook must be very, very tiring if you're kicking already at the 1,000 meter mark. So. Uh, Long, long way to go. And Romanchuk still seems to be relaxed. Lee goes up again for the German. Increased it by a couple of tenths of a second, up to 1.35. Paltrinieri, to me, looks done, but maybe he's got a kick finish in there. But his body language and the way he's coming right across to the lane rope doesn't suggest that to <laughs> me right now. Uh, he wants to keep the pace of Romanchuk, but just cannot hold on to the Ukrainian. But can the Ukrainian hold on to the German? That is the question. Yeah, now with 300 to go, it's back to 1.10. When they come back down this way, 
Romanchuk keeps easing into that lead. Because he's breathing to that side. So uh, when coming back to this way, then he sees uh, Valbrook at each stroke. So that is the chance of the German. Now, when's he going to try and do that decisive break? Maybe it'll be coming soon if he's allowed to do it, of course. It's uh, not totally up to him, but the gap is now under a second between Romanchuk and Velbrook. Velbrook still in command just, but it's getting tighter, it's getting closer, but time is running out. A little bit more than 200 meters to go, and Romanchuk now still very relaxed, very long strokes, but a good puppy length the advantage of Valbrook. Four more laps to go. Well, I think the gap is shorter. It is down to 0.83. He's taking about a tenth of a second, and he's more than that for 50 to make it. Now he's going to have to really go for this. I think we can. We have discounted Paltrinier for quite some way. It's his bronze. He doesn't have to worry about anything else now. He's got a medal. Question is, where is the gold and where is the silver going to go? And I think that gap is just getting a little bit shorter. Look at that. Almost on the feet now of our leader. Let's see what happens. We'll know more with the clock. Yeah, down to 0.74. So once again, one tenth of a second. But that is not going to be enough because we only have three more laps to go. Now half the body length in between the first two, Valbrook and Romanchu. And when Valbrook hears the bell, that is going to give him extra strength and power for the final 100 meters. And it is close. It's getting closer. You can see visibly it is very, very close now. We are down to 0.37. And they're going to go stroke for stroke. And this often happens, doesn't it, in a 1500 freestyle. It comes down to 100 sprint. <laughs> Look at that. After hearing the bells, Valbrook found some energy. So the gap is not increasing anymore. And not decreasing as well. So he might get home with that. Well, he might not, too. Let's have a look on this turn, how close it is. Half a second. Can Romanchuk find half a second? Can he find 0.57 over the last 50? The crowd really getting into this. They don't have a British interest. They don't have a horse in this race, but they are getting fully behind these two. And you know what? Every time he's under pressure, the German just comes up with something, and he has nailed this race. He has won this race in a super time as well. 14, 36, 15 for the German. It will be and is silver for Romanchuk. So a silver to add to his gold in the 400. Valtrinieri, the European record holder, back in third. Brilliant, 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 Florian Valbrook. I don't know how he found the energy in the final 100 meters. But he had the fastest finishing 50. I think he's quite happy with that. <laughs> and it really hurts for Romanchuk. You know what? He was preparing for a duel with Gregorio Patrinieri. He had the perfect tactics against the Italian. Only to find out that, oops, there's another guy on the other side. Not well, that one. really has deflated the Paltrinieri balloon because he came into this meet really thinking he was in great form and great shape and thought he could win this. But normally, 1442 that Paltrinieri swam, normally that should be enough for a title, but not this time because we had Valbrug doing a new personal best and also Romantic doing a new personal best. Terrific time for our winner. 14.37 he did earlier on this year, so he's beaten up by a full... Now Wellbrook moving into the fourth position all time. So he is the fourth fastest swimmer ever to swim this 1,500 meters. And he did it under threat. There was always that ominous shadow, if you like, of Romanchuk getting closer, got within well, just about half a second, didn't he, off that final turn, as close as he'd been, really. But he wasn't able to power home because the German had other ideas. Uh, we have the result confirmed. Isn't it good to see all eight under 15? How often do you see that? I don't really.